One of the first things you'll notice upon beginning the build of the T-Rex 700X is the new rotor head line has developed. Uh, unlike the last few iterations of the T-Rex 700E, uh, this model features a traditional follower uh, swash driver type rotor head. So if we take a look at the DFC rotor head hub that I have here and compare it to the new hub included with the kit, uh, you'll see that they're virtually the same height. Uh, so this gets the lower or the rotor head lower to the center of gravity and will allow for the model to roll more axially in flight. Um, it's even shorter than the EFL head that was released about two years ago now uh, by Align. So if we do a comparison there, you can see that it is quite a bit shorter. So in addition to the new lower rotor head hub, uh, we also have some changes to the follower arms. Uh, the plastic radius arms here are quite a bit uh, beefier than the previous iterations and also much shorter uh, in order to work with this new shorter head. Um, I have some of the older ones here just for comparison. Um, you can see that the uh, plastic is much, much shorter on the newer head versus the old one. Uh, we also have a nice red anodized finish on the follow arm itself to match the uh, red and clear anodized finish you see on the remainder of the components here. The rest of the head geometry is similar to the FL head released last year. Uh, it uses the same FL arms, uh, the same V2 blade grips that we've been using since about 2011, uh, and the same spindle and, other, and uh, damper design uh, from the DFC rotor head. One other interesting point about the new rotor head too is the line has eliminated the M4 by 8 millimeter bolts that used to uh, provide additional support for the main rotor hub to the main shaft. Uh, this is now achieved by two uh, Jesus-like bolts that go through the previous holes in the DFC main shaft. So you'll have one bolt going through this portion of the hub and you'll have another one going 90 degrees from it this way. And those will be what is providing your what is securing your rotor hub to the main shaft. One of the principal advantages of the new 700X is the two-part frame system. Unlike Align's previous 700E DFC, which featured a single frame per side, Align has split it up into two sections, an upper section and a lower section here. And this offers some distinct advantages over the previous iterations. By reducing the overall frame width of the upper frame portion, we're able to reduce flex in the, in the drivetrain assembly portion of the frame, which improves our drivetrain life dramatically. We were also able to reduce the weight of all the components here, as we don't need our bearing blocks to be quite as wide as they were before to support the single frame side system. So by reducing the width of everything, all these components become smaller and help save weight. The upper portion of the frame has also been simplified a bit compared to the previous DFC model and doesn't feature any of the integrated injection molded uh, frame guidance as you saw before. Instead we have some rubber washers that have been included for your wiring in the frame as well as some PEM nuts that have been pressed into the carbon fiber here. All of which will help reduce the expense of this component as a replacement crash part. In the lower section, by maintaining the same width as we saw previously in the Align 700E DFC models and earlier. Um, we're able to maintain the protection of your battery packs as the frame spacing remains the exact same as in the 700E DFC in this section of the frame only. So your batteries will still be contained within the side frames and protected in crashes. You'll also be able to reuse your old battery trays if you had a previous T-Rex 700E model as they are the exact same for the 700X. Uh, further, again, if you crash, this lower frame half is much cheaper to replace than the entire um, one-piece frame half from the Align 700E DFC models and earlier. One more feature I want to point out too is this embedded rail that Align has included, which is used to fasten the lower frame to the upper frame. Um, by including this into the model, we're able to eliminate the aluminum bracket back here that was installed previously and also provide a nice conduit for guiding your tail rotor uh, servo wire to the front of the model where your electronics are located. Here you can see some of the internal frame geometry included with the T-Rex 700X, such as the anti-rotation bracket, the upper and lower bearing blocks, which are now the same. We have our third bearing block assembly, our servo mounts, which now thread into the bearing blocks. We have our uh, frame support side halves, and we have our narrowed motor mount. Also interesting to see here is the new pinion support bearing assembly. 
a line have included a larger bearing than in the previous pinion support. This will help improve the life of the bearing that supports your motor shaft versus what we had previously. On a side note, this pinion support bracket is also available in for the older 700L and 700E models with the larger bearing as an upgrade. So if you are looking to make a small upgrade to you, one of your older T-Rexes, uh, you too can get the benefits of this newer bearing assembly by purchasing that bracket. Also included with the 700X is the newer line main gear assembly, which is taller than the previous black main gears included with the 700L model. Um, and this taller gear offers more tooth contact for your main gear assembly, which will improve the drivetrain strength as well as its longevity. Also included out of the box is the newer one-way housing assembly, which uses larger and longer socketed cap screws in order to secure the main gear to the auto. Taking a look at the motor included with the 850MX, we can see that there are much larger bullet connectors now included than in previous models. Um, the 700L and 700E before we had 4mm bullets that were included which tend to be a little bit difficult to solder on to some of the larger gauge wire of the more common 700 ESCs out there on the market. So these newer bolts should help you get your model in the air a little bit quicker. Another major feature of the Align 700X is a change in the bottom plate assembly. Align has reverted to a similar configuration that they used in the original 700E, which is a carbon fiber bottom plate with several aluminum bearing blocks that attach to the bottom plate at six different locations. Uh, these bearing blocks also serve as your boom support mounts uh, when we get to that portion of the assembly. The Align 700X also features new landing struts that provide a five degree slant to the model to make it look a little bit more aggressive in flight and also provide clearance, additional clearance for the tail rotor case. Uh, during landings. So uh, that is a nice feature there. Uh, it does have the double holes here So if you would like to use these on your 700 Nitro DFC, which has the narrower frame spacing These are compatible with that as well Another small thing to note it the model does come with the silver struts Also included with the 700X is a new servo from Align. These are the 820M servos for the cyclic and the 825M for the tail rotor. There is also a non-M version of each of those which has a plastic upper and lower case. Um, the ones included with the kit are the metal cased versions um, of the servo, but if you prefer the plastics you could get those separately as they're a little bit lighter. One of the big features of this new servo is this clearance machined in the top of the upper servo case and this provides some room for the ball and your linkage from your swash plate to move up into this zone of the servo without binding. Another small improvement to the Align 700X is the change of the servo ball threads here. So on the included servo horns the threads are now two and a half millimeters. In some of the older horns the threads were only two millimeters. Taking a look at the front transmission case, we can see that it has been narrowed considerably from the previous 700E front transmission case. It is actually narrower than the transmission case included with the 700 Nitro DFC model, um, which also features a narrowed frame type setup. So this one is actually even narrower than that one. So if you're looking for a spare replacement part for the 700X, you will need to ensure you order the 700X um, front transmission case. Um, some other small changes to the molding here. You can see there's been some windows added to the sides. Um, the interior or exterior here has been webbed out a little bit more to save weight and the whole assembly has been lightened up a little bit. Another area line is approved on the 700X is in the torque tube assembly. Here I have the new torque tube which now features a collar over the area where the torque tube end threads into the main torque tube shaft here. And this collar basically provides some support over the threaded area of the torque tube where the metal gets a little bit thinner, uh, which improves the torque tube strength and Taking a look at the 700X tail case assembly, we can see two minor improvements back here. Uh, one of which is similar to the servo horns we looked at earlier. The thread size has been increased from 2mm to 2.5mm on your tail pitch lever. The second improvement is a change over to a socket head cap screw style bolt to secure the uh, tail pitch slider dog bone here to your tail blade grip. Another small change to the tail assembly is the inclusion of a plain carbon fiber black fin. On the previous 700L model we saw some coloring on this style fin but there is now a plain carbon fiber one included with the 700X.
Taking a look at the front transmission case, we can see that the top portion here has been narrowed considerably from the previous model, which was as wide as this lower section down here. So again, the name of the game with the 700X has been to save weight, and this has been done in this case by shaving off some of the plastic here. Uh, the gyro mounting pad has also been lowered a bit from where it was previously. And we've webbed out this back area here to provide more clearance for wiring to pass through into your fly barless unit and electronics that now will mount into this vicinity right here. Similarly, you can see on this side we've got the same kind of arrangement here with lots of holes and slots for Velcro straps, zip ties, or whatever method you find to fasten your electronics into the front receiver mount area here. Um, retained from the previous 700E models is the push button uh, battery tray release. Also, as mentioned previously, the 700X does use the same battery trays as all the previous 700Es. So as long as you have one of the metal battery trays, um, you are good to Finally, go. One of the other major changes to the 700X is in the canopy. It has been lightened significantly, and while I don't have a scale handy here, this canopy just by feel feels about half as heavy as some of the previous 700 electric canopies that have been offered in the past. So a lot of weight savings here. There have been some ventilation slots added to the canopy in order to provide some airflow over your motor. And the canopy has also been restyled a little bit from the previous L model, so it no longer wraps around in the back, again, to save some material. So a new canopy for the 700X as well.